What a wild time this has been. The potential for a recession every single day grows and grows and grows. I'm going to show you the first thing is the double bubble. We are looking at asset classes just going from one end of the spectrum to the other. I'm going to show you gold. I'm going to show you oil. I've got a lot to cover. The second thing is the Fed blunder. Jerome Powell said something and I didn't see anybody covering this. It's so key in my opinion. The third thing is if you stay until the end, the next shortage. What are we talking about here? We've seen everything go into shortage apparently. And if you stick around, I'll show you that and more. Let's begin. Despite how much money has been printed, despite all of the fiscal policies that have been put in place and every asset going through the roof, take a look at gold still around this range of 1800 it's like nothing can move it it's unbelievable it started to go up it was going up for a few months and now it's changed all this inflation everything that's been happening historically and yet it has been around this range seemingly forever that's gold right now on the other end of the commodity spectrum we have oil WTI crude at $87 a barrel. Look at it over the past month. It's been up and up and up. $87 a barrel getting, inching, I should say, inching closer to that $100 a barrel. I was covering this all the way through ever since it went into the negative or you know zero in some cases. Looking at this is just unbelievable. To see the rise but if you see what has happened with other commodities despite its importance and prominence it hasn't increased like those others speaking of oil you can see you know we break it down to a different level this orange line here that's oil okay so you could see what happened correlating by the way this is from the beginning of 2020 this correlates directly with the RSX, and that's Russia's stock index. And looking at this, of course, they fell together. They came up together. All of this, you know, moves that has happened. Being a you know, oil country, very prominent there, it's going to move with it. There's always going to be variances. But you can see here, and then we get to this point in the fourth quarter, of 2021 both start to move down and then right around i mean it's hard to tell on this chart uh, specifically but towards i think it's right about there towards you know let's say within the last month there's a disconnect and a chasm has grown chasm has formed in between oil and the rsx now, there's some geopolitical issues I'm not allowed to talk about on the channel that are happening right now that could be affecting that specifically with the RSX. If those get resolved, we could see this, and assuming that you know the conditions are still there for oil, we could see the RSX turn around, flip on a dime. Pay attention to that. I'll try to cover that as much as I possibly can. Okay. Hope you appreciate that. Now, I thought this was interesting because you could see the investor sentiment at historic pessimism due to the sell-off in tech and growth. Watch closely for the capitulation and bullish reversal basing. Look at what has happened. Investor sentiment is at historic pessimism, worse than March 2020, worse than December 2018. Even in 2008, similar spikes led to violent bear market rallies. And lastly, when investors finally got this negative, 2000, 2002 tech crash was over. So many have started to say, now's the time to buy. That's it. Others are saying, no, 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 no. That's not the case here. There's still a lot of downward pressure. Nobody knows until we get into it all. But you could see what has happened with the markets. They were telling you November, December, January, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. And every single time there was a bit of a, I don't even want to call it a rally, but every time stocks 
started to try and inch their way back up, they were hammered back down. So right now, most of this is, happens to be the S&P. You could look at anything else, you know, see the NASDAQ. Actually, it would be, I believe, important to look at the Russell because the small caps right now in a bear market. They are officially in a bear market. Small caps down just over 20%. Now, the market, by the time you're watching this video, may have actually moved up. Apple is, you know, everybody's looking at Apple and, oh, that's so fantastic. It's going to carry the entire market. We will see what happens. What about Tesla? Tesla absolutely pinpointing the top. Elon Musk selling at the perfect time. It is down 30% from its peak, um, you know, around that just under 900 mark, we will see what happens. Despite excellent earnings, despite what they had shown, you know, performance of the stock, different situation. What do you do though when your stocks come down? What do you do when you have a crisis? That's right, you get the government to intervene or the central bank to intervene. Take a look. Chinese fund managers heed state call to invest after stocks tumble. Just like the plunge protection team in the United States, you've got the Chinese national team. The CSI 300 hits its lowest point since September 2020. So here they, you know, they get into the details, you know, what basically happens here the government has these entities um and they are state-owned entities that will go in and buy up the shares when they're needed okay that is it's it's not um you know conspiracy or something this this is the way it is the state-owned securities times ran a front page article blaming some domestic institutional investors for holding short-term views on some issues and failing to be the ballast stone of the market ah that's right hurry up and get on with the buying they're not going to allow these companies to actually sell stocks oh no no, no. Anyway, you can read it if you want. It's a Wall Street Journal article. Links, as always, will be in the description. Look at what's happened with some of these. GME. Now, GME, at least on this chart here, it is around that 100, specifically 97. Let me just pull that up really quick. It is at 90, yeah, 94 approximately. 94, even lower than this. It's minus 80% from its absolute peak. The problem with this, now, okay, it is way up from the from the bottom here there's, there's no question about that but how many people bought in at that really really low point it's probably not that many a handful just a handful a lot of people bought in on you know some of these peaks and then this peak and then this peak and they were thinking no let's go let's do it and unfortunately a lot of people get crushed in the process and that's the unfortunate part most people just don't have the ability you know, to, to get away with those hefty, hefty profits. And that's an unfortunate thing. So what's going on here? What did the Federal Reserve do? Everything related to the Fed right now. Look at the last FOMC meeting in December, the dollar. Ever since that point, leading all the way up into mid-January, the dollar was falling. All right. But ever since the stock market started to decline, we are started to have some tr serious troubles. Well, then, and of course, inflationary pressures, we have seen the dollar rising back to that same level. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Of course, there is that correlation between the stock market and the dollar, and then you look at it internationally as well, the forex and so on. And there's there's a lot of moving parts when we look at the dollar. It's not its value you got to measure it against real goods and, and so on but this i thought was huge okay so let's maybe we'll start with this one ex fed official and by the way former he's the former uh dallas fed president so it's not just some random guy this is richard fisher warns against the fed to the rescue every time there's a crisis now i love the former fed people because they tell a lot of information. We've seen this many times before. 
He believes that the market has become too dependent on the Federal Reserve in times of turmoil. Quote, I think the market is getting ahead of itself because the market is dependent on the Fed largesse. Futures were pricing in around the 70% chance of a quarter point percent cut, excuse me, for a quarter percent cut in March and two additional cuts in 2020. Hmm. This is back in 2020, February 27th. Take a look. So it comes in here, uh, right here. The Fed has created the dependency. The Fed created the dependency. They've only seen a one-way street. Of course, they're nervous. The question is, do you want to feed the hunger, keep applying the opioid of cheap and abundant money? Money is already cheap and abundant. Fast forwarding to today, Fisher says, the market has been wearing beer goggles for the longest possible time. Everything looks beautiful because money was free. They just assume the Fed is going to bail them out. The strike price on the Fed put has moved significantly. Okay, I hope that makes sense the way I just explained that here. Okay, huge. But what did the Fed do? The Fed blunder. I want to get into that right away really quickly, okay? So, um, as you know, the Fed has their meeting. You see this the the press conference that comes out. So you have the statement at two p.m. and then the two thirty. You get the conference and the reporters get to ask questions. This is a full doc, like you can look at the CNBC articles, the Twitter, all that stuff. I go to the actual Federal Reserve website and I get the quotes. Okay, so Rachel Siegel basically asked about, I'm wondering if you could talk about any metrics that the Fed uses, how to assess inflation, how the inflation affects different groups of Americans, especially lower income earners. Something I talk about all the time. I know that people are affected by this. Real people are affected by this. Perhaps it's you, perhaps it's family members, friends, whatever. That's why I cover it. Look at what he says. So it's more of a matter of, I think the problem that we are talking about here is really that people on fixed incomes who are living paycheck to paycheck, they're spending most or all of what they earn on food, gas, and so on, basic necessities. So inflation right away, right away forces people like that to make very difficult decisions. So that's really the point. I don't, look at, this is it. I don't, I'm not aware of, you know, inflation literally falling more on different socioeconomic groups. It's, that's not the point. The point is some people are just really in prone to suffer more. Some people, look at that. Some people are really, are just really prone to suffer more. Some people, some people are prone to suffer more. What do you think about that? Let me know in the comments. The multi-millionaire Jerome Powell is saying, some people are just prone to suffer more. Yeah. And as he says right here, no matter who you are, inflation is bad. No, no, no. No, that is not true. If you're at the very top of the scale, not the top 20, not the top 10%, not the top 5%, but the one and above, inflation is real good. Okay? It's real good. Now, you stayed until the end. What's the next shortage? Cardboard box shortage is the latest disruption to the global shipping. Oh, my goodness. Cardboard? I mean, have you ever heard of this before? I mean, obviously, anything could be in a shortage. There could be problems all along the line. But, you know, think about it. We're getting shipments. We're, we're shipping stuff out. It's in cardboard. There's different types of cardboard. Actually, I had to learn about this a few years ago. You know, how thick it is and so on. There's more material being used. Um, dimensions, everything. But anyway... I just thought it was interesting that these things that we didn't even think about two years ago are now so key. Just makes you think. That's all. All right. So if you appreciate the information, all I ask is a thumbs up. As the views decline significantly, 
your thumbs up mean more and more and more. So I do appreciate that. It's right down below. If you haven't seen this video yet, you can check it out right here. Just click it and I'll see you there.